Hello YouTube, today we're going to learn how to make our first flat ride and this is what the finished product will look like. Still a little simple, maybe a bit extreme thrill ride and I'll show you how to animate it, uh, bring it into the game and also set the waypoints so they you walk up and down as you'd expect. All right. So, in Blender, I've already created this model, and I won't go into all the details, but just to give you some inspiration, uh, you're going to want a base, so that's this, and that won't be moving, and I've just made some steps going up, so it's a little more interesting. Uh, also, for reference, I've added a plane, and... As you might have noticed when you played the game, the flat rides are in these large grid shapes. So they have to be one full grid unit. They can't be half a grid unit. So just to give you a reference, you can add a plane and then you can change it. So in a full size increments, so if we go top view, so that's like a three by three. So you can start your model first and just add that later and make sure you're about the right size. It doesn't seem too big or too small for the footprint. I've also added lights. And for my lights, I used the array modifier so that it I just have the one sphere on the bottom and then it arrays them all up to the top. You can see how that works. And then I've also mirrored it. And we'll hide the plane. Next for the ride, this ride is gonna go up and down, it's also gonna spin. So you can see kind of this channel here. So there's just this simple little pyramid. That's what's gonna go up and down. And then we have the chairs and those will pivot. And so you can see I've placed my pivot point right where it intersects with the pyramid. And then it'll rotate around that point. And then I've also added my seats. And it's important you add your seats at this step so that the guests animate along with the ride. For these seats, I just used the hyper coaster and deleted the wheels. So that's an easy way to get started. Before we jump into the animating, I did want to let you know that there's a lot of great details in the Parkitect wiki. As you can see it talks about the footprint. We're also going to be adding the collision box, some waypoints that help the guests get to the seats, and then we'll tell it where our animation is. All right, so for an animation, once you have your model set up, you're going to want to make sure you have your base as the top. And then since we have two kind of points of rotation, we have the up, down, and then we want it to spin around to that up, down point, I've nested them. So if you're trying to nest something, you'll have this like hierarchy, you move it and then you just hold shift and it'll parent to that point. Let's do that again. So that's really important, you just figure out your hierarchy. All right, then we're gonna go to the animation tab. And just to make sure yours is set up right, you'll wanna select in here the dope sheet. And then up here, I have the graph editor. All right, so we'll start with the flat ride. And I'll add a location keyframe, so I'm hitting I, and I'm at 0, 0.0. And then at the end, which you can choose how long your animation is, these are frames, and the uh, wiki recommends about a minute for the length of your animation to uh, be in line with the other existing rides. So we'll set this at like even 200. That's a little shorter, but we just want to make a quick animation. And then we'll keyframe the location again. And so 
you can see we've got X, Y, Z, and then over here, these are the numbers. So it's just staying at zero the whole point. So our base isn't moving. And it's added an animator to the base. Okay, now for the ride, this is the little pyramid and it has the chairs parented to it. So we'll add another location keyframe. And since we're actually doing things here, I'm gonna lock some stuff. So we can expand these. We're only moving in the Z direction. So we'll lock X and Y, those are locked. And now we'll go to like keyframe 40 and we'll move it up there and we'll keyframe in the location. In the graph editor, if you hit home, it zooms in and like scales it so it fills the screen. So now you can see between this keyframe and this keyframe, it moves up and down. You can hit play and watch it do that. If you select a keyframe, you can adjust it, these curves. You can also select both keyframes, uh, right click, and then there's some options here. I usually change interpolation mode. So we could do something more interesting like bounce. And then it automatically animates this bounce for us. Let's see how that looks. Adds a little more energy to it. So we'll let it sit at the top here. Just add, add another location keyframe. Now it's flat. And then we'll drop it, location, and since I switched the interpolation mode to bounce, it's going to keep doing that for every new keyframe. And we'll go up one more time, and then we'll go all the way back down. And if I select this, it'll make those reappear. Um, so let's just move, let's actually move these keyframes so they're right on frame 200. And you can do all sorts of things down here. You can copy and paste. Um, you can scale them. So like, scale it like that. Uh, you can also scale things up here and copy and paste. Um, but that looks pretty good. Let's just watch that play through. Perfect, okay. So while that's going, now we want our chairs to rotate. So once again, you start, this time we're gonna add a rotation frame and it's rotating with the Y axis. So we'll lock X and Z, and then we'll have it first get up there, and then as it drops, we'll add our first rotation. There we go. And then as it drops more, we're gonna rotate it back. That looks a little fast. Let's move that out. And then one more rotation back. And then a final rotation. Oop, looks like we need to rotate it a hair more. And it'll just overwrite that if you're at the same keyframe. I and mean, you can also see over um, on the right side, the transform is changing, which that can be a bit confusing if you go back and start modeling. So make sure you're on keyframe zero if you're gonna start changing the model again. Okay, and then here we'll just add our final Rotation, there we go. And you can see here, I didn't do the uh, bounce, it's a smoother rotation, but we could still tweak these uh, handles if we want. 
that for example. So this will just make it dwell a little longer at the top. All right, let's watch it all the way through again. Perfect. Okay. So now you're gonna select everything. Uh, you really wanna make sure everything's expanded. Like if you just had it collapsed or if you had your chairs collapsed, it might not select the seat. So just open everything up, shift select. And then just export FBX. Now you might have noticed a jump cut there. That's because I just spent an hour trying to figure out these export settings. So with the props, it's pretty easy. You can just select this experimental apply transform and that fixes a lot of the issues going from Blender to Unity. But as it says here, it does not work with animations. So um, I figured out some ways to get this to work for me. It can be kind of inconsistent, so you might need to play around with it. But uh, the important things are you wanna make sure over here that your scales are all one and uh, you do, your location might be off for some of the sub ones because their origins are different, but it really these scales are critical. Um, so you're gonna change from local to unit scale. And then I had to change the directions to X forward and Y up and that made it point the right direction. Yeah, like I said, don't check experimental. Then for bake animation, you'll uncheck all these and that collapses these animations. So we have you know one for each object. It's gonna bake them all together. So we'll make this a new version of the ride, save it to the Unity folder. Okay, now in Unity, you can see I've done a few other tests. So we'll bring the latest version in. And if you expand this, you'll see all the models and then the uh, baked animation. If you go to Inspector, you can play that animation. And then if you select the top level uh, object here, you can also see under animation some more information with the import settings you can just leave those default so this is 200 frames uh 30 frames a second that's the speed of the animation so even if the game is running a different frame rate that's the this animation speed will stay this long so that equates to 6.6 .6 seconds and we don't want to loop it because it'll just play uh, once and then the ride will be over which is what we want so You've got all that set up. The next thing you need is an animation controller to tell it to play when the ride starts. So when you import the uh, Architect Asset Editor, you get all these folders and there's flat rides. And what you can do, I'm just gonna show that folder in Explorer. You can just copy the controller and we'll name this Bouncy Ride version two. And then we open that up. It's already been set up. So there's an idle state, which has no animation. And then there's the run state. And I already put an animation here, but that was from the old version. So we're gonna grab the new version and put that here. And then if you click it, you can see it's under version 12. It selects that. So that's all good. Now you, we've got, uh, there you go, that's version 12. We've got that and it's selected here. And now we just want to apply our animation controller. So this will disappear if you click around here, but if you reselect that and then drag this right there, I think we actually want, yeah, version two. Okay, so that's all set up. Now, just like any other one, drag this over here, make it a flat ride. Set a price, set some colors. I already chose a few out. There we go. And 
Also, I want to make sure we got all our materials applied. So let me put the glow on the uh, red lights. We want the lights to turn on at night. They're color one. You can set the different rating stats. Uh, the Parkitect wiki, not the GitHub mod wiki, but the regular one has some stats if you want to compare it to other rides. And then the ride footprint. So set that to a, a whole number. And you want to make sure you have this selected for it to show you what's going on. And you can see it recognized our seats, but the guys got rotated. That's fairly common, not a big deal. You can just select all the seats and then rotate them. We'll zero that out. Okay, so we've got our ride footprint. So it's that white square. That looks right. We'll make this a thrill ride. No rain protection. Give it a description. You can add bounding boxes for your collision. So you drag this around. So hold S and it'll snap in units of one. And then we can set the top. That looks good. And then you click this again to disable the editing. Okay, next we'll add waypoints. So this will tell the guests how to walk around to get to their seats. So you wanna generate the outer grid and that puts four waypoints in each square. I just looked at it from the bottom, so they're easier to select. Then you can move them. So I'll just move these uh, to the outside corners, like so. And then it has some letters you can press to change uh, what action. So it's just like move, you can hit C to be in connect mode. And you can see again to deselect. And so we want to connect these outer ones. So this is letting the guests walk between them. Okay. And the next thing you want to do is you want to add some waypoints on the steps. And you, know, you can move them up and down if you need to, but it's pretty smart and puts them on the place where your mouse is. So in this case, I'm actually gonna hit C. I'm gonna get rid of that line. I'm gonna connect it there. And then we'll connect these. And we'll connect those. There's that line. So that's the path the guests will follow going up the stairs. And the last step is we'll just add a few more waypoints, all right. And for these last ones, you can scroll down here and you can say, is rabbit hole goal, which is a silly way to say that's the finish line. And so once they're there, then they'll do their normal sort of float into the actual sea. So we can actually move this a little closer just to make it look better. Okay, and there's all your waypoints. And it knows where our seats are. And so we can click this. All right. And that's all there is to it, your first flat ride. So we just want to export that and then we'll head over into Parkitect and give it a test. Okay, now that we're in Parkitect, we can get our ride from the throw ride area. Plop that down. And turn it on. There we go. All right, let's see if there's any guests brave enough to give it a ride. Oh yeah, that looks safe. All right, and that's all there is to it. Our first flat ride. Nice work. See you next time.